Well, a lot of people have been coming by asking me what we're doing here. And um, what we do is we take vintage cars and we drive them nine days, uh, 2,300 miles. It'll go from one destination to the other. And we have no idea how we're going to get there. Um, it's it's a, a real, it's a hard thing to do. But we have so many amazing people here that have been doing this for a long time. And they are super excited to have people like us. We're, we're kind of new at it. And so there's a huge community of people and a big family that will help you learn how to, how to do this correctly. Welcome to the start of the Hemmings Motor News Great Race, presented by Haggerty Drivers Club. The best rally drivers in the country have gathered in Warwick, Rhode Island for the drop of the green flag. The race has several returning grand champion teams, such as Doug and Howard Sharp, Beth Gentry and Jody Knowles, Jeff and Eric Fredette, last year's winners Jenna and Olivia Gentry. Any of these teams could bring home another championship. These contenders will be battling it out for more than $150,000 in prize money. The grand champion will be taking home $50,000. With 10,000 plus spectators lining the streets and banks of the beautiful Rocky Point State Park, this is set to be one of the greatest starts of the race ever. The governor of Rhode Island, Daniel McKee, and Warwick Mayor Frank Pocosi handled the green flag duties. This race goes for nine days and ends in Fargo, North Dakota, home of a crowd favorite, the 1918 American La France, driven by Jay Reinen and Chris Brungart, the wandering troubadours of Finland team. People are joined together, north, south, east, west, the coast, the middle of the country, all have something in common with these cars. And it makes people feel like they're kind of back together again, you know? It's a 1918 American La France. It started life as a fire truck. Uh, I, we're guessing sometime after after the war, some guy chopped it down to the speedster that it is. It's uh, four cylinders, nine and a half liters. So it's like big giant paint cans going up and down. And uh, it, uh, it's scary. It's a chain drive, nine and a half liter, four cylinder. It's uh, by far the loudest car on the race. It backfires, it has shorty pipes, uh, it's stinky, it's smoky, it's oily, it has wooden wheels, it has only brakes in the rear. It's, it's the most primitive car in the race, and that's why we race it, because, um, you know, uh, there's people that have these cars, but they don't want to put them on the road for 2,500 miles every year. And I, I look at this and I say, you know, I'm used to this car. I put 20,000 miles on this car, I, it drives fine to me. Just make sure you don't follow too close. That's my only advice on it. Make sure you follow too, don't follow too close and, and really grease, put a lot, a lot of grease on those chains and you'll be fine. We were faced with a challenging set of instructions, but were able to come off the clock and enjoy a fun afternoon at Wayne Carini's F40 Motorsports in Portland, Connecticut. In, in high school, I drove a 1949 Plymouth and uh, that was kind of the start of it. And uh, I've, I've collected cars for a number of years. Uh, my wife's sometimes happy about it, sometimes not, but you know, she knew that, she knew that when we got married. So she knew she wasn't gonna change me out of that. And I, I, I really do live and breathe cars. And of all the cars that I have, this one's the most fun to drive. That's why I have it on the race. And it's also, I think, uh, to people, it's the most fun to look at of the cars that I have. And I look at this race as being a mobile museum. You know, people that can't get to the big cities to see the big collections like the LeMay or uh, Las Vegas or uh, Reno. Um, you know, this, this collection of cars, this museum is traveling to your town and these people aren't scared about getting the cars dirty, which is the best thing about it. I mean, this, this car has been washed in 10 years and everyone who puts their car in this race knows that it's, it's gonna get dirty it's going to get gravel thrown at it. It's going to get people putting their thumbs on it. 
and that's what it's here for. It's, it's, uh, it's here for people to see, and I think that this race, to me, is, is one of the biggest things to keep in the car culture alive, because if you just keep these cars parked in your house or in your trailer, um, nobody's going to see them, and kids aren't going to get interested. And if kids don't get interested, then when we're all gone, cars are gone. Temperatures dropped and so did some precipitation as the cars made their way to a great evening stop at New England Air Museum in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Connecticut State University. Look at that cool car. Well, uh, today was a, you know, um, we had a, we had some negligence on the part of the navigator. Uh, I'll, I'll directly blame him, and you can ask him whose fault it was. He's not going to admit to it, but we uh, we missed a couple of turns. We just uh, have to knock the rust off. We were still able on one of them to make up the time, so um, we. Uh, we just laid some coal down with this fellow and we were supposed to be going 25 and we were going a little faster than that to make up the time. So until we saw the car that was ahead of us and then we just kind of figured out how far back of that car we need to be. It's called hacking and uh, it's that's uh, basically that's how we get through our, our race is hacking the, uh, the better drivers. We ended up having a nine second day which, uh, in the scheme of things, is a it's a good day. Winners of stage one was Eric Frankenberger and Aaron Reed with an astonishing two-second score. They got four aces with only five checkpoints. I'll tell you what we've uh, we've got a lot of ones uh, over the last three years uh, that we've done this. We've gotten you know, non-stop ones. Felt like we were missing the aces by just a little bit, and uh, it just all hit today. All, uh, instead of the ones, we got aces, which was amazing. My grandparents had a Ford Model A Roadster my entire life. It hadn't been running for 30 years, and um, we didn't even know how much it was worth to try to sell it. Years before, I had seen the great race on television, and I had asked my dad, do you want to take the Model A, you want to do it? And he said no. Every year, I'd ask him, no, no. But then after my grandparents passed away, we had the car, we didn't know what to do with it. I finally found somebody who could help me fix it, and I said, if I take the car and fix it, will you do it? And he said, yes. First great race, the whole reason that I did it, I think I really pushed to do it with him. He's gonna get mad for talking about it, but he had had uh, surgery, heart surgery, and he had had a stroke. And he was always talking about how he couldn't remember things, he couldn't remember words and stuff like that. And I remember thinking, no, you can do more than you think. When it became time for us to do it, I mean, he thought we were just doing it for the car. I always cry because I was doing it for him. I wanted him to, um, 
He loves cars. And I knew if we just drove from place to place, yeah, we would have, you know, after nine days, we would have 18 car shows to take him to. And really, we were horrible at the first race. I mean, we're still learning, but we were bad. And um, it was just to get him out and to drive. And I think at one point he fired me as a navigator. He was looking for somebody else because he was so into it and he did great. When my mom did the race in 2019, she did it in the Model A. And when she asked me if we want to do it, I was like, I'll do it with you, but only if the car has windows. I was not gonna do it in a car that didn't have windows and that maybe went a little faster would be a good thing to have. So <laughs> she found the Mustang and then after we got out of our first time, I was like, I wanna do it again because I just loved it so much. I love the community. I love being in the car and I just thought it was a really fun experience. There are so many people around you that want to help you learn and succeed. And when you do run that perfect leg and get an ace, you're hooked. When things start to click and everything is working and your calculations are correct, the passion that is rally racing becomes addictive. It just gets in your blood. These racers become family. Day two brought several challenges for the drivers and navigators of the course. Racers rolled out of Windsor Locks, Connecticut and made our way to the back roads for a scenic route that featured hills, narrow roads, and countless small towns. The teams fought through congested streets, traffic lights, and other distractions, but managed to stay on time. We made it to Montgomery, New York, and were greeted by thousands of folks who came to check out the field of 130 cars and trucks. From the great state of Georgia, Chad and Jimmy Caldwell in the 1931 Auburn Motel Speedster, check it out. 1932 Ford, they're so sweet, but they will absolutely stop you on the race course. 1932 Ford, five weather Today, we didn't do very well. I think it was hard because um, the legs are really long and then just as you get kind of everything adds up, it's hard to do. It was hard to do. The thing that I enjoy is that the great race through Connecticut and New York is like a tour through the countryside and looking at, uh, looking at houses and looking at uh, lakefront property. It's really a nice treat to go through all of those areas. I mean, the way my brain works, I guess, is I really like to figure things out and like in school and stuff, I'll make sure I understand the concept and for this, there are so many parts to it that, I mean, can go wrong. Like your calibration can be off and you can have a whole off day. And I just like, I love that challenge and trying to figure it out and just trying to get as perfect as I can. And I mean, we're not perfect, like it's not gonna be good and it's just always gonna be something that I'm gonna have to learn. But I just like, I guess I crave that challenge and I really, I wanna get better at it. Cause it just, every time I don't get a good score, it just makes me wanna do better. Car's running great, it's not raining on us. It's, uh, the weather's been reasonable. It's fun, it's good. It's kind of fun watching this front tire, it wobbles a lot, but if you hit the right speed, you go like 53, it straightens out. So the driver, driver's wobbling around too all the time. Didn't get enough coffee. He's a little grumpy this morning. He's quite shocked with me. After a quick lunch, we were back on the road for a beautiful drive along the Delaware River along Route 97 and got to see the cool site where the famous Woodstock took place in 1969. As Chris said earlier, we're just happy to finish the race every day. I look at these people, uh, you know, like the Sharps, for example, they're driving a 1916 uh, Hudson and they come in with a two second day. In other words, they've driven eight hours and they've only missed the perfect time by two seconds in eight hours. I mean, that's just astounding to me. If we make it within five minutes, we're out just high-fiving each other. Hey, five minutes! But these guys are doing two second, three second days and they'll go the whole race. They'll go nine days on the race and they'll show up with a score of like a minute or something like that. A minute from a perfect score across 2,500 miles of a race. I can't even, we're not those people. We're the people with the chain grease getting on our back. I mean, we're just, we're just, we're just trying to avoid uh, 
you know, hitting people taking pictures of us on the road, you know? <laughs> Our brakes started on fire coming down this big hill. It just creates too much friction and they just can't help themselves. And so it happens often enough that we just have a routine, which is to get out and pour a bunch of water on it and then it loosens up. And it looks a lot worse than it is, but we have to make sure that the, the wood wheels don't start on fire, which is what happened coming down Mount Washington. I started noticing that oil pressure was dropping. Every time that we would come up to us, actually, it started to drop when I'd hit the gas. Hit the gas. Typically, you want oil pressure to go up when you hit the gas. So I thought, oh gosh, we are running low. And it turns out that, sure enough, we were, because when we pulled off to the side, oil pressure dropped nearly to zero. So as soon as we added, what, four and a half, it's back to normal. So it could have been way worse than what it is. That's why you always check your gauges. And uh, this is a way to, to get to see an extended family of people. Um, the people that are on the race we've gotten to know and, and it's kind of part of our family. And we also bring, uh, my literal family comes along. My cousin Chris is a navigator, my two brothers are on here, I got a brother-in-law, I got cousins. Uh, it, it's, it's a way for us to get together every year and just have kind of a mancation. It's just, uh, we love it. And, and, and it's a lot of fun to see America. Sitting in this old jalopy here and driving through middle America and all the small towns and the excitement that's drawn when people come out and see us. There's towns of, you know, 1,500 people and there'll be 15,000 showing up to see the race. It's just, it's the most exciting thing that happens in some of these small towns. And I love that they do that. I love that, that uh, John and Jeff and the, the, race, uh, the race people put this through middle America, through rural America, and man, you, you just, it, it really gets people out and excited and, uh, you know, waving their flags and just having a good time. Once again, we had a new first time daily winner, Neil Catfish Myerskopf, and his daughter, Shanna Banana Chatraw, in their 1934 Ford Indy Racer. Well, today was kind of a tough day. What we thought was going to end up being horrible scores ended up just a spectacular day. Uh, my daughter Shanna, hands down, one of the best navigators I have ever had. In fact, she's the only navigator I've ever had. Uh, but she's awesome at what she does and I owe everything to her. She's the best there is. And we're very happy, very fortunate to be here and we're thrilled with such a great day and a, a great finish for the day. Day three started in Binghamton, New York, going all the way to Erie, Pennsylvania, our fourth state in three days of rallying. Well over $5 million worth of vintage cars will be on the road during the great race. The oldest vehicles in the 2022 great race are a pair of stunning 1916 Hudsons and there are more than 50 pre-World War II vehicles signed up for the competition. The remainder of the field is made up of 1974 and earlier vehicles. start we realized we're only braking with one of our you know we have four wheels to start with only two of them have brakes now we're only down to one brake working so we're tightening up the other one try and match with the left one that started on fire yesterday and uh, hopefully get both braking again so we can stop a little easier
racers saw a really big, enthusiastic crowd at Alfred State College the in Mercury Wellsville, races. New York, Never for the lunch stop. Since. Curtis Graff out of Irving, Texas, ladies and gentlemen. His experienced navigator Robert Dingus from Killen, Alabama, 1932 Ford Roadster. The wandering troubadours of Finland. Welcome to Alfred State, Western New York. Front line and out of Ottertail County, Minnesota. Chris Brungard, his esteemed navigator out of Fargo, North Dakota, is his homecoming week. It was a long trek that saw plenty of hills and beautiful views. The teams were greeted by another awesome crowd in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I'll tell you what, that's what really keeps you going at the end of the day is you, uh, you pull into a, a new city. We're in Erie right now and we couldn't tell how many people were here and we get past the finish line and look down and there's just, I don't know, tens of thousands of people waiting. And uh, people really love the car. They love how it sounds, how it looks, uh, you know, the greasy chains on it. And I think a lot of people look at this and they say, man, uh, I can't believe these guys are driving this thing, you know, driving it across country, let alone from stop to stop. And so uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's great to see people get excited about the race and about old cars, and it's bringing out a lot of non-car people, I'm sure, and uh, kind of the idea here is to get these people interested in the hobby, and I think, I think that everyone here is doing that. <laughs> Today is another, uh, it was a tough day again with this car, this old car with these old brakes. Uh, going up the hills weren't too bad, but coming down is pretty bad, you know, most uh, most cars have four wheel brakes up here. We started with only two mechanicals in the back and only one was really working. So uh, we had some tough times uh, uh, stopping. Uh, so we slowed down a lot of different races. So we had a really struggle to keep our times up and we end up with a great day. I'm, I'm really happy. I mean, we ended up with 38 seconds for, for a score and other people would think that'd be horrible and be, be finding the closest bar to drown their sorrows. Well, I'm drowning my sorrows right now, but I'm, I'm excited. 38 days in this car is uh, 38 seconds. It's a fantastic score. To receive an ace or a perfect score, you have to follow the day's set of instructions and get to undisclosed checkpoints at your exact scheduled time. At the end of stage three, it was team Josh Hull and Trevor Stahl taking home the daily victory with a score of 1.62 seconds, one of the lowest daily scores in the history of the great race. Well, it definitely wasn't the easiest run we've ever had. Um, beautiful scenery throughout uh, New York. Uh, roads were rough, um, a little wet coming, coming in. It's nice to uh, get, get redemption for our day yesterday. So. Uh, Yesterday we didn't do so well, so today was a good day and got to see you know, beautiful walking Glen and that was fun. Four <laughs> aces, <laughs> a little bit of skill, a little bit of luck. This show is brought to you by Hemmings Motor News, dedicated to your drive. Haggerty Drivers Club, let's drive together. Coker Tire, it's all about the journey. McAllister's Auto Transport, delivering excellence every day. We started our day in Erie, Pennsylvania, where temperatures were already higher than it had been all week. From there, we blasted into Ohio to start our day of competition. Within a few minutes of going on the clock, we passed through a beautiful covered bridge. The rest of the morning was spent making our way through farmland, and that would set the tone for the rest of the day's rally. Corn, soybeans, wheat, and other crops would make up the scenery with a challenging mixture of at-speeds turns, stop signs, and speed changes.
stopped in Medina, Ohio for lunch and were greeted by thousands of spectators who braved the heat for an awesome experience as 120 plus great race cars rolled into town. Great race cars rolled into town. Perrysburg, Ohio had a huge turnout for the dinner stop, complete with a car show that included lots of great local cars. I am very proud of Della. Um, when we first started this, we did a practice run and, um, and she quit. <laughs> and I thought, gosh, and then, and then I just thought, we need to do this, it's such an accomplishment. And then, you know, you kind of go, through like the low points and the hard points and and so to, to come up to the finish line to see John holding those we were about to I think I screamed publisher long time publisher of Hemmings Motor News he lives in Valley Ace <laughs> <Hey>, like <laughs> five wow. there you go Four second day, which isn't the best, but one leg was pretty bad, and the other ones were six, two, eight, zero, one. So it was way better. It feels good. I feel like I'm finally, I'm doing it right. I had a lot of math carrying down all my pages, and I just had my fingers crossed there that I was doing everything right. When we pull in, there's so many cars, and I mean, we saw all the Model A's on the side of the road, and my mom almost started crying because she saw the Model A's, and just like the people here to support us is amazing to see every time. Amazing to see the cars that people cherish and take care of and that they want to come out and they want to share it and, and then I start crying and then uh, I can't drive but it, it is really nice because you know they're kind of hidden all over the US and so we come into town and they all come out and it's like going to uh, we're on the road for nine days we get two stops a day 18 car shows that was super exciting. I think from my perspective, watching the, the emotional cycle of this whole thing, seeing the hard part of it and you really feel it, and then seeing like the ace come in, it just makes it all worth it. All of a sudden you're just uplifted again and you're ready to take it on. And today it was hot. It was 96 degrees here and humid. And I know they were just dying in the car. So talk about a way to sort of pick you up at the end of the day. That was super cool. The team that tamed Stage 4 challenges was Jody Knowles and Beth Gentry with a score of 6.48 seconds. Try to put it all together every day. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, we had a good day today. We had two legs, you know, and then, like I said, we had four aces and it worked out. This is, this is our Daytona 500 or our, you know, world championship. This is it. This is the Super Bowl. So that's why we're here. Just before lunch, we um, um, started to hear some funny noises coming from the back. I, I, it puts out a lot of funny noises, but unusual noises for this car. And it was uh, kind of a rear end noise, a transmission, transaxle noise. And um, a couple of years ago, 2019, we ran a 2013 Cadillac. and. It started making funny noises and we didn't pay attention right away and it threw a rod through the block and you know got shot with uh, all kinds of flying brass from the motor. I will not forget that experience and so I've learned to, if you hear a funny noise, you know, pull over. Even if you lose some time, pull over, take a look at it. So we did, we couldn't figure out what it was and rather than drive 60 or 70 miles, whatever it was that we had left to get to lunch, um, I made the executive decision to uh, park the car, have it flat bedded back, which you know, nobody likes to do. You know, we don't like to do it. Um, we don't know. Um, 
The problem with diagnosing a you know 104 year old car is that the people who know how to diagnose it died 60 years ago. So we just have to kind of guess and take things apart, and uh, that's what we're doing right now. And and this is kind of a fun part of it. Uh, as I've said before, we uh, uh, we're not in this to win because. We, we just aren't competitive with this car. Or frankly, with me as a driver, or Chris as a navigator, we're just not competitive. So what we try to do is we try to keep our car going. This is part of our, sort of our ritual. We sit out here and people gather around and drink beer and uh, you know tell stories and uh, put the car together. And a lot of people from the hotel, the other racers and the team, people from the community like to come around and see this weird thing that we're taking apart in the parking lot that they've not seen before. It's it's kind of it's fascinating for people. So if it didn't break down we wouldn't have this little communion here every night. So um, hopefully we'll have it back tomorrow. We expect to be on the on the course tomorrow and uh, expect to do poorly as we always do, but we hope to make it to the finish line and, uh, okay. and uh, continue well, on into Illinois, Wisconsin, it. Minnesota and uh, to the homeland, North Dakota. As we make it past the halfway point of this year's Hemmings Motor News Great Race presented by Haggerty Drivers Club, we cross two more states off the to-do list. We started our day off in Ohio and the teams had another tough day that included more tough intersections and stop and go instructions. This allowed us to cover a lot of ground on small roads, eventually making our way to South Bend, Indiana for the lunch stop at the Studebaker National Museum. Um, well, we're sisters, and we're currently not speaking. Um, we missed a turn about uh, the, it, within the last five seconds of the race. We missed a turn, so uh, we're we're way behind right now. Uh, this morning we had a little rub. Let's say we had a slow truck, a train, and a horse and buggy that stopped us. So it's been a little rough morning, but it's been a great, great route today. The afternoon saw more farmland and plenty of challenges. Rush hour traffic, big trucks, and construction made it a tough haul, but it was worth it. The stop in Plainfield, Illinois was absolutely stunning. Thousands of people came out and packed the streets to welcome these racers in town. At the end of the day, it was another different daily winner, the fifth different winner in five days of competition. This time, it was Jeff and Kylie Hermanson with a score of 5.07 seconds. Uh, the day was great. We got to go uh, through South Bend, which is only about 45 minutes from our hometown, so that was fun to see some family and friends, and it was a great day in the Midwest. The truck's running great, but I got to give all the credit to my navigator for today's scores. and. We've had good scores all week, except we've had one bad leg every day. And this is the first day we put together five good ones, so it's... Uh... Uh, someone gave me some advice about the stop signs and timing them and how to do that, and it worked great. So kudos to them. Today we learned about endurance as we tackled some of the toughest roads in Wisconsin. Early in the morning we saw a long stretch of secluded road which was marked as rustic. Racers had to make their way through it to make our way to the lunch stop in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. We were greeted by a huge turnout. We're loving it, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, seeing some great, great places, um, some great folk on the rally. Um, all different types of cars, yeah. so yeah, it's yeah, brilliant. All the welcomes brilliant. you get from these small little towns is absolutely fantastic. So, it's a bit hot, we could do with some snow, yeah. some rain. Much better. Apart from that, all good. 
Rockets. It's our first rally ever. We've never never done this rally, never done any rally with this. This used to be a race car and we converted it to a street car for, for this event. So yeah, it's all new to us. Yeah, we started on time, didn't miss any turns, stayed on course, did all the right things. So we're just hoping that our our charts and timing was right. That's that's the big thing. There's so many times when you come up to an instance where it's like, oh, turn right here. Turn right here, drop the speed, pick up the speed, and doing calculations to make sure you're doing the right speed at the right time. And uh, keeping the car alive has also been a challenge as well because uh, there's just certain things and certain quirks that you find out about the car as you drive, you know, 2,500 miles that you got to fix as you go. Uh, we are starting today, we started in second place overall today. First in our class in Grand Championship class. Today we didn't make much of a move, we ended up with an 11. So we'll see how much that move uh, adjusts with everybody, with all the other competitors. Tough day, a lot of speed changes and large speed changes, which add a lot or subtract a lot to your score. Um, when you're doing 15 to 45 or you're doing 20 to 50, there's a lot of error that can be put in. So you're really trusting the driver, me looking at the navigational charts to try to pinpoint that as best as possible to get a good score. So happy that he chose Rhode Island at the start. He was just absolutely fabulous. And we played in Texas and Colorado, North Dakota. It's going to be great. Woohoo! Yeah. The sixth consecutive day, we had a new winner. Jeff and Eric Fredette took the daily win with a score of 5.71 seconds and didn't get a single Eckler's ace in the process. Pretty busy day actually today, and but it was made it exciting today, so it's good. Stay consistent every yep. day. Is consistency at this point. I mean, you looked at it last night, it's like, it's not that much difference between the top 10, 10 teams. Yeah, we've, we've led down the, the East Coast that one year, we led all the way down to Jacksonville, and then we fizzled. So, and in, in 18, we were, no way we were gonna win that thing. And yeah, everybody else had a bad day, and we didn't do anything wrong, so. You know, it's, you know, there's no, no set formula that's perfect every day, so it's, Whatever team can bring all those formulas together and, and make them work. And, you know, the last two days are no throws, so you got to be spot on the last two days. There's nothing wrong. We had a lot of ground to cover to make our way to Duluth, Minnesota on a selection of secondary roads. Nothing terribly serious. This thing uses a lot of water, leaks out a lot of water, and so we just have to every once in a while need to pop her off. And since we they shut off our leg early because of the rope is here, we just thought, well, why not just pull over in the shade, drop a little water in it, keep the old fella cool. This is our temperature gauge. It's our mercury thermometer just sits in the top right there. It's like the old timey thermometer and when the red gets up into that range, it's a little warm and when it gets to the top, it's too warm. And it moves. We tackled some of the toughest roads in Wisconsin. Early in the morning, we saw a long stretch of secluded road, which was marked as rustic. Racers had to make their way through it to make our way to the lunch stop in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin.
there was a great turnout of folks at Bayfront Festival Park, where we saw the temperatures drop sharply from the 80s that was a to 60 degrees. That you could put the Honda Civic in the trunk, guys. Yes. Today. I can't believe it. We got zero two, second no one. score. Oh, one free. Oh, you got one free side, so I called two. We got two aces. It was, uh, it was a good, good, nice ride today. Uh, no car problems. Uh, we had new tires in the back. Um, everything, worked, everything worked just as it's supposed to be, and I think our times were pretty good. At the ace, I must have been surprised. I did something wrong to get it. So uh, it's pretty exciting, though. Uh, you know, we've got plenty of twos and threes this, this year, but uh, this is our first day. It's pretty excited. It's, you know, it's working. It's doing what we're supposed to do. People always say like aces or ones, which is like the, the better score to get, because the one means that you're really close, but you're doing it right. So if you get a day with five ones, some might even say that's better than an ace, but the ace is pretty fun for like a little little validation that we're doing it right but sometimes I'd say like all low numbers might be even better than an ace but they do look pretty cool to put on your car. No one wants you to not do well like they all want you to try and they want more people involved in the sport so it's great to have people to help you come over because some of these things there'll be a turn where you're going at a certain speed and out a certain speed and I just have no idea how to time it where to time it where to split my speed stuff like that so it's I'll do it a certain way, but then there's always a bunch of different ways to get there or different ways to do the same maneuver. So it's nice to have people to ask and just check your work. How did you do this? How did, would you do this? And everyone will have a different answer. And that's the great thing I feel like that there are so many people here is that I can ask four different people and they're all going to tell me different ways to do the same thing, which can be a lot, but it just shows how much room there is for each person to do it their own way. Stage 7 winners are Jeff and Kylie Hermanson with an outstanding score of 2.54 seconds. It was a tough day. We we had a couple things that we needed to fix throughout the day and uh, it all ended up working out just fine. So a couple mistakes on my part, but worked out fine. I started us really late on the last leg, but luckily we were able to make it up and did fine. Well, I, we have to figure out how much time we needed to make up first, so that's the first part, and then uh, we go 10% over our speed, so we were going 50, we had to go 55 for as long as I needed to make up 17 seconds, which was a lot of time. Competing against some, yeah, the best of the best, and, you know, it takes a little luck along the way you know, along with, with some experience, and she's got the most experience of this group, so. I don't know what the course is going to be. They don't tell us until we pick up the instructions, but um, it's, I'll, I'll be familiar with all of it. It's uh, driving into my hometown, it's kind of a neat thing. Uh, probably have a lot of my uh, high school and college friends there, my family's here. Uh, it was great yesterday because uh, my wife and kids showed up, um, my sister, uh, her grandkids, uh, just a, it was just a great family gathering and it was just well done. Uh, great race, Jeff Stone, John Thompson, just put on it, as they always do, put on a great show with a great route and some of the best scenery that you're going to see in the United States. We just had, um, so far, eight days of just beautiful, beautiful landscape and really nice people, really nice little towns that we're going through, some big towns. Um, and everyone's just excited to see us. It's, a, um, it's just an honor doing this year after year, and uh, I really have to hand it to uh, Haggerty Coker Tire um, and, and the great race people who just, you know, every year they just put on uh, just an amazing logistical show and take this traveling museum to uh, places that most of us have never seen before.
The last two days of the Hemmings Motor News Great Race, presented by Haggerty's Drivers Club, are always challenging, as no legs can be thrown out from the daily scores. We stop for lunch at Brainerd International Speedway. Today, we saw rainy weather early in the day, but later saw beautiful blue skies, unbelievable clouds, and cool temperatures. The wind really picked up, which presents a challenge when it comes to holding speed for long stretches. The racers arrived in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota to a very excited crowd. I think it went pretty well. Uh, we felt pretty good about most of our maneuvers. And then starting in the morning with the cold weather um, and the rain kind of affected the tire pressure, which I think changed throughout the day. Um, and that would account for some of our late scores. But we were happy with a lot of our communication and everything else. So it's pretty good at all. We started racing at 16. I think probably the best score we've ever gotten in nine years of doing this. We got uh, we got an ace, four early, one early, eight eight late, eight early, and a two two early. Great great day. We're dialing this guy in. The race is just ending too soon. <laughs> I can't believe it. The, the car was running great. Chris and I were in sync. Uh, really, I think what happened was the car finally settled down, got done breaking down for the race, and I think Chris said it best. If we had like three more days to run the race, we'd probably be in there fighting pretty well because the 15 second day with this thing is insane. I, 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 couldn't, I can't believe that we got 15 seconds. It doesn't make any sense to me. My boys even over here. Uh, I got relatives up from Kansas even. So it's a, it's a great deal. It's fantastic. It was Howard and Doug Sharp at the top of the list with a 4.62 second score. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a tight race for, for I think, a whole bunch of cars. It's still a tight race as of today. Um, Doug and I had a nice little quote on the way in that, uh, you know, we only got five ace awards and we never won a daily and we're in second place. So I don't know how that happened, but it's been exciting for us to be where we're at. So uh, I'm liking it. What changed today? He drives the same every day. I try to navigate the same. Uh, it just works out today. There's nothing, there's no, uh, certainly no secret to it. It's just trying to stay on time and stay on course all the time and be as prepared as you can for every instruction that shows up. That instruction is just a little bit different. You have to figure out how to make it perfect every time. We don't, we don't do anything. It's just an old 1916 Hudson we hang around in the farm with and just drive in the, in the lot once in a while. No, only kidding. But no, it, we, we do all our work at home or we try to because this thing breaks just like any other car. And we could nip a tranny off tomorrow. I mean, who knows? It, the, my biggest fear for tomorrow really with this car is a mechanical failure. That's because we probably won't have a failure, but a mechanical failure of the car we can't control, and it can be something as simple as a flat tire. And I mean, I'll stay on every ounce of pavement that I can be on tomorrow. I won't pull off on that side there anymore. I did today, but after today, that's it. We're going to be staying black top. It is going to be fast and furious. We've been cruising along for three days, doing some long legs. Tomorrow we'll have probably just one good long leg with a whole bunch of checkpoints, and uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be a heck of a day tomorrow. This show is brought to you by Hemmings Motor News, dedicated to your drive. Haggerty Drivers Club, let's drive together. Coker Tire, it's all about the journey. McAllister's Auto Transport, delivering excellence every day. The three-time winners of the great race had not yet won a daily trophy, and today's performance actually put them at the top of the overall leaderboard by only three hundredths of a second. It's going to come right down to the wire on tomorrow's championship run. 
here it is, the final day of the 2022 Hemmings Motor News Great Race, presented by Haggerty Drivers Club. A combination of long runs holding speed in the strong wind, as well as a tough series of short instructions through neighborhoods, made for a tricky day, even for the experienced crowd. Ultimately, when we came off the clock, we grabbed lunch at the Fargo Air Museum, and then made our way into downtown Fargo for a spectacular finish. We were thrilled to make our way into Fargo, North Dakota for the final day of rally. This town, home to the wandering troubadours of Finland, really turned out to see this rolling display of automotive art. They appreciate and understand the car culture, and it made for an outstanding finish to the Hemmings Motor News Great Race, presented by Haggerty Drivers Club. After all the cars came through, the top contestants circled back around for the winner's ceremony.
predict what was coming and how to do all the moves. So it's getting easier for sure. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, every time I see him come in, I, you get kind of emotional almost at the let You're just nervous and anxious and kind of can't wait to see what happened and how their day went. And every day they've just gotten a little bit better and their smiles have just gotten a little bit, bit bigger. So I think it's super cool to see that and kind of see mother-daughter team do this. It's, it's rare, it's fun, it's just an amazing experience. Yeah, I mean, it feels like we should keep going today. It just feels like it was a half a day. And you kind of get, you get halfway in, you get in this groove and you think, oh, and then you just, and then you get going and you want to keep going. And I feel like tomorrow I'm going to wake up and think I should be somewhere and where's my navigator. And I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he finds these routes, but they are amazing. It takes us by the water, it takes us through, um, landmarks that he feels are significant that we should know, like the largest radio antenna in the United States. So it, it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of, it's a great way to see the, the, the U.S. Rally racing is, uh, is an interesting sport that I didn't know I would ever be a part of. But to see these cars, to see what people put into them, to make sure that they can make it, you know, some people drive across the country, do the rally and then drive back. It takes so much work and just to see these cars finish is, is just, it makes me proud to be a part of it and to have one and to be able to do this. Central Connecticut State, you have won your very first Great Cup Division outing. Dr. Tom Mitchell, 13 years, it was very close. The little answer got it done. For the very first time in 39 years of great race, a rookie international team has won the rookie division. Lynn Treeter, Christoph Lay, 1960, Chevrolet Impala. You are the rookie winners for 2022. Five seconds separate them again. It was a close race. I love all of these guys. Christian Lauber, Brandon Gregg, 68 Mustang. You have won the sportsman division. You are now experts. Listen, Dieter, oh my gosh, you guys were giving it everything you had. That's your stogie fired up in there. Give it up. Congratulations, boys. It was a close race. My pleasure to announce Josh Hull and Trevor Stahl, you have won the expert division. All right, here we go. Howard and Doug Sharp, you've taken it. The grand champion division. Very high level. Josh Hull, Trevor Stahl. There we go, boys and girls. Congratulations to Josh Hull and Trevor Stahl for the first ever Great Race Grand Championship. We've done for nine years and um, Fargo was hands down the best crowd that we encountered in the whole race. Everybody just showed up and I, I thought they would because this is um, this town likes these kinds of events and it was perfect for them to end. We, we ended this beautiful downtown with the Fargo Theater and all these great old uh, old buildings in downtown Fargo with a huge crowd on a beautiful day. And um, it's just the right ending to uh, just a, a wonderful race that was um, by far, I think, the best race that we've been on in, uh, in the nine years that we've done this. I, I, there's not even really a close second as far as I'm concerned. Things were just great, and um, this crowd is... Look at 
that you can't even, the cars can't even get wide. There's so many people just packed in here that just love cars. And Fargo is a, it's a car community because, you know, people get bottled up in the wintertime. And so when you're out in June, if you've got a car, you're out driving it. And so people are excited about it. And uh, we're just happy that the great race chose to come through here and get I'll tell you, uh, Jeff Stum, John Klassen, uh, the whole great race team, I got to thank you for it.